Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about one particular example where implicit differentiation is very, very handy. Um, a couple of examples were in the previous lecture where I explained what exactly is implicit differentiation. And this is just one of the examples of some classical and simple function uh, where it's very useful actually to have this particular technique. Now, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics presented on unizor.com. That's for teenagers and high school students. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because it has explanation, like a textbook basically. It's notes for each lecture, very detailed notes. And in addition, there is certain educational functionality in the website. If you are signed on, then you can, for instance, take exams, which is very important um, uh, as, a, as a basically development of your logical thinking, creativity, etc. The site is free, so you can take as many times exams as, as, as you want. All right, so let's concentrate on this particular problem. So my problem right now is to take a derivative of the function arc sine of x. Sometimes notation is sine to the minus 1 of x. Uh, I prefer not to use this notation because uh, sometimes it means arc sine, sometimes it might actually mean really sine to the power of minus 1, which is um, reciprocal. All right, so let's forget about this. I will use arc sine. Now, um, before um, going into the detailed calculation, let's just talk a little bit about the function itself. Now, the function is um, the uh, reverse of the sine, obviously. Now, the sine has a graph, as we know, something like this. And obviously, there is no uh, real function which is defined for any argument, um, I mean reverse function. First of all, what is the domain of this inverse function? Well, the sign can take values from uh, minus 1 to 1. So basically this function has domain from minus 1 to 1. Now, what are the values of this function? You see, the function sine is periodical, which means the same value of the function corresponds to more than one values of arguments. Actually, infinite number of arguments have exactly the same value of sine. So if we want to talk about reversing the sine, which means from the value we should really get the argument, we really should restrict what kind of argument we are willing to allow as values of this function, uh, so the function basically gives you one concrete value for the argument. So in this case, what is the angle sine of which is equal to x? Well, as we have, we have many different angles. Now, traditionally, what people do, they just cut from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Only this interval of angles are allowed. And as we see, as angle is uh, within this particular interval, the value of the sine goes all the way from minus 1 to 1, and it's monotonically increasing function, which means it has um, the reverse function, which is arc sine. So the values um, of this function are, are actually in the interval of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. And this is the graph of the function um, arc sine. From minus 1 to 1 is domain, and from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, it's the values of the function. And as we know, um, the graph of this inverse function is symmetrical to the graph of the original function sine relative to the bisector of the um, 
main angle, right? So at bisector of this at 45 degrees, and if you will invert, you will get the sign. Okay, now we are ready to talk about derivative. Now, traditionally, what, how, how we derived the derivative for function sine, for instance, or for any other simple function like y is equal to x squared or something. Well, we basically followed the definition of the, um, of the derivative. Now, the definition of the derivative is if you have to take um, increment of the function at point x divide by increment of the argument and have the limit as uh, increment of the argument is infinite, in infinitesimal value. Well, and we actually calculated exactly what is the derivative of the sine. Um, now you can actually, if you want, you can review this. It's one of the previous lectures. Um, and one of the very important points was uh, the limit which we actually proved before that this as uh, as x goes to 0 this goes to 1 so this is the base of the formula which we have derived for uh, uh, derivative of sine now here unfortunately we cannot really do something in this particular way because if I will do increment arc sine of x plus delta x well, it's kind of difficult to deal with. Just think about how would you deal with this? I have no idea how to, to, to deal with arc sine of x plus delta x. When it was sine of x plus delta x, I know what is the sine of the sum of two angles, there is some kind of a formula I was using, etc. There is no formula for this. So the whole method of direct calculation of the derivative um, might not really work here. At least I don't know how to do it. All right? However, there is a method of implicit differentiation which does help in this particular case. Because what does it mean that we have this function arc sine x um, it means that the sine of arc sine of x is equal to x, right? That's what actually means that w w the, the value of arc sine, what is it? It's an angle, sine of which is equal to argument x, right? So that's the definition of the arc sine. So this is just the definition of the arc sine. I mean, it follows from the definition of the arc sine. Why is this better? Well, here is why. Now I will use this principle of implicit differentiation because this is the function and this is the function of x. Right? For any x which belongs to this uh, interval from minus 1 to 1, this thing is true. Okay, so we have two functions, which means I can take their derivatives, and derivatives must be the same, right? If functions are the same, derivatives might be the same, must be the same. Now, derivative of the left part, well, this is a compound function, and you remember the chain rule. If you have a compound function, first you have to take the derivative of the outer function, derivative of the sine is a cosine of the same argument, and multiply by derivative of the inner function. So um, the derivative of arc sine of x, I will use prime as a symbol of derivative, right? And what is it equal to? What's derivative of x? Well, derivative of x is 1, right? Okay. Now, Look at this. We basically have unknown derivative which we can determine from here. So arc sine of x derivative equals to 1 over cosine of arc sine of x. Well, number one I can just leave it as is. Number two 
I know that this is supposed to be somehow simplified. Let's just think about this again. Arc sine is an angle sine of which is equal to x. Now, so I know that the sine of this is equal to uh, x. Now, what is the cosine? Well, obviously, we know that the sine of square of uh, phi plus cosine square of phi is equal to 1, right? So, cosine of the angle is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square of phi. Actually, technically, I have to put plus minus here, right? Now, let's think about it. What is this f? It's this. Phi. I should say phi. Greek letters. So, I know that I am from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, right? So, phi is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Remember the graph of this uh, cosine? This is minus pi over 2 and this is pi over 2. So, it's positive here. Which means I can just take only the plus sign. And now I can have it equal to... So, instead of cosine of this, I will just put this. Square root of 1 minus sine square of arc sine x. But we know that sine of arc sine is equal to x, right? So it's 1 minus So the answer is 1 minus x squared. So that's my final formula. So this is a derivative of the function arc sine. Well, might be a little unusual, right? You remember from sine you have cosine. From cosine you have minus sine as a derivative. Well, you might expect that <laughs> Uh, that derivative for, for, from arc sine must be something like arc cosine. I don't know. But anyway, this is not arc sine. It's a completely different formula, and that's actually what it is. Re you, there is nothing to, 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 to argue about this. If you remember the, uh, the derivative of the function logarithm x uh, is 1 over x, which is also kind of unexpected. But again, it is what it is. So, that's the answer. I do suggest you to go to the unisor.com website and just read whatever the, uh, the, the proof of the same thing actually is. It will probably help you to better understand this principle of implicit uh, differentiation. So, sometimes the functions like this, and you can obviously do it yourself for arc cosine or anything like that. So, sometimes this implicit differentiation is uh, very useful and uh, it, it looks like otherwise you cannot really derive this formula at least not easily at least I don't know how all right all right that's it for today thank you very much and good luck